Repairing your gut is not quite as simple as it seems on the surface, right? But there are a couple of very basic things that you can add into your diet that based upon pretty legit peer-reviewed literature could remodel your microbiome and also remodel sort of the digestion that comes along with, well, healthy digestion. So let's go ahead and jump right into the first one, okay? So psyllium is very interesting because psyllium is what you would typically find in like Metamucil and things like that. Now what's interesting about psyllium is that psyllium doesn't just change the microbiome. It seems to change the microbiome more for people that are imbalanced or for people that have digestive issues, like they're constipated. There's a study uh, specifically that looked at this. It was published in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences, and they looked at healthy people versus people that were constipated. Now, in this study, they gave them psyllium, or they gave them a placebo, or they gave them psyllium plus maltodextrin. Both groups that had psyllium, okay, whether they were healthy or not, the healthy group specifically ended up having a small but still significant change in their gut microbiome. Okay, cool, that means it changed some things. It probably provided the gut with uh, the fuel that the bacteria needs to grow and thrive. But what was very interesting was that the unhealthy group, the group that had the constipation issues and the messed up gut, they had a significantly more pronounced effect from the same dose of psyllium that the people that had a healthy gut had. So they got more benefit from it. So that's interesting because a lot of times when you look at fibers, they're not necessarily quote unquote selective. Like if you have a bunch of bad bacteria in your gut and you pumped a bunch of prebiotic fibers in, it would grow that bad bacteria. This was very interesting because it remodeled it in such a way where it actually helped the people that were constipated and had a dysfunctional gut sort of rebalance. A couple of specific strains of bacteria that were increased, there was an increase in Lactospira and Fecobacterium. Now these are two specific bacteria that are heavy butyrate producers. So in this world, we have people that are heavy lifters and people that are sort of background workers, right? Well, in the bacteria in our gut, we have the same situation. We have the real heavy lifters that are the heavy butyrate producers. These are the bacteria that have profound metabolic effects. We saw big increases in those kinds of bacteria as well as Villanella, which is a unique bacteria associated with exercise. Anyhow, let's put all that aside. Let's kind of move into this next one and talk about artichokes because artichokes contain something very, very interesting. Now, before I get into artichokes and talk about how this works, uh, you probably are wondering if having a probiotic and adding a probiotic into the mix can increase the benefit here. One of the ways that I see this working very well is remember that fibers like psyllium are fuel for the bacteria. So if you use a good probiotic and you add that into your diet, you're adding the bacteria into your gut and then it's your job to take care of that bacteria by feeding it the right kinds of fibers. I put a link down below for the probiotic that I use since I know it's gonna come up in the comments. It is called Seed. Okay, and that link down below will save you 15% off. So it has a prebiotic and a probiotic capsule inside of a capsule. So when you ingest it, you're getting the proper delivery, the proper staging, where some is deposited in the upper GI and then it kind of goes down the train like that. So very interesting stuff and that link is down below to save you 15% off. Plus, they are funding a lot of microbiome research, which just makes me appreciate them and what they're doing. So that link for seed is down below your daily symbiotic. So with artichoke, there's two reasons why it works so well. One, it contains a very long chain inulin. Now inulin we see in food packaging all the time. We're like, oh, inulin, they added inulin because you'll see it in like chocolate and stuff like that. It's a binder and it gives bulk, okay? But inulin is a unique soluble fiber. And when you look at the research, particularly one study published in the British Journal of Nutrition, they looked at 10 grams of inulin over the course of 16 days in individuals. And they found that inulin specifically increased bifidobacterium, which is a bacteria that is very much so associated with antioxidant effects and creating B vitamins. We can literally create B vitamins in our gut. And B vitamins play a tremendous role in guess what? carbohydrate metabolism. So one of the issues that a lot of people with a gut dysfunction have is when they consume carbohydrates, they get bloated. And they automatically assume, oh, I can't have carbohydrates, I get bloated. 
I think the issue is probably stemming more so from a gut imbalance. I think we inherently know how to process carbs, but when you start remodeling the gut and you develop the enzymatic ability to deal with the carbohydrates, you have less gastrointestinal distress from those carbohydrates. But that's cool. I mean, there's other vegetables that have inulin. For example, like asparagus has inulin. So why artichokes? Well, artichokes contain something called cinerin. And this is exceptionally important if you follow a higher fat protocol which whether you're low carb or not, if you consume a fair bit of fats, this is important. So the Journal of Phytomedicine published something really interesting. They found that overall, when you consume things like cinerin from artichokes, it increases chloresis, which is bile secretion. Now bile is secreted by our liver and our gallbladder. Our gallbladder kind of acts as like a storage facility for bile that's produced by the liver and then it secretes it. Well, bile breaks down fats. Okay, it also stimulates the increase or the secretion of pancreatic lipase, which breaks down fats. So what this does is makes it so that you don't get the gastric distress that comes along with fat consumption, but also allows you to break them down into their usable form and into their storage form if need be. They found that when cinerin was ingested, there was a 127% increase in bile just 30 minutes after consumption, and 60 minutes after consumption, 151%. So this is very, very important to be paying attention to. So the two types of fiber that I think if you really need to remodel your gut are gonna be psyllium, which is easy to get your hands on at a drugstore, and artichoke, okay? Because artichoke doesn't just have the inulin, it has the cinerin in it as well. And just to give you an extra little bonus here, if you really wanna polish it off, very interesting research that came out in the journal Cell in 2021 that found that if in addition to fiber, you add some fermented food, like maybe fermented dairy, like kefir, or maybe a little bit of yogurt, you actually increase the microbial diversity. So then you have the effectiveness of the microbiome doing its job better, but you have more bacteria in a diverse sense because fermented foods actually sort of, quote unquote, plant the seed for more bacteria. Very, very interesting. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.